Hey guys, how you doing? So, a BOV, a blow-off valve, uh, an atmospheric blow-off valve specifically, does it make more power than a uh, valve that a recirculating uh, pressure relief valve like you'd find on the car from the factory? So I've done a quick diagram here. Um, so, basically this is the part that we're interested in here. So, you get, uh, the air comes through the air filter, goes through the MAF sensor, into the intake, turbo, intercooler throttle body engine and then the bob then is going to be mounted either between the turbo and the intercooler or between the intercooler and the throttle body uh, when the throttle body is closed we get a vacuum here which opens the bob which opens the blow off valve which then will either release the gas back into the intake on a recirculating type or release it to the atmosphere on an atmospheric type so does a bov does an atmospheric blob bob make more power than a recirculating valve in theory, in theory, uh, yes, it does. Um, but in reality, in practice, will you notice it on a daily driver? Probably not. So let's just cover the, the three benefits um, that you get from a uh, atmospheric bob. First of all, when the air is released, there's no resistance. You don't have any uh, elbow here to, to re redirect direct the air into a pipe. You don't have the walls of the pipe to deal with, the air doesn't have to travel through bends in the pipe, and then the, the air does not have to travel through a joiner which reintroduces the air to the intake. You can get rid of all of this with an atmospheric blow-off valve, just dumps direct to the atmosphere, more or less next to zero resistance. Second uh, thing is uh, capacity. So this is kind of related to power. If you're running a big turbo, making a lot of power, you need to get rid of a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of air, a lot of pressurized there between gear changes, potentially. And again, you're going to be limited by the size of the pipe that you can run from the bob to the intake. So again, same issues as the as the restriction. Uh, you know, there's a limit to how big a hose you can run through the engine bay because of space, basically. So that's the second one. But the biggest one when it comes to power, why an atmospheric valve is theoretically better than a recirculating valve. With an atmospheric valve, you're not recirculating warm air into the intake. As you know, putting warm air into the intake reduces power. So this is exactly what the uh, factory blower valve is doing. It's either going to be, well, worst case scenario, absolutely terrible idea, but some car manufacturers put the, uh, the valve between the turbo and the intercooler. So you're recirculating hot air back into the intake. Um, and then the better solution is to mount the bob after the intercooler, but still, you're still going to be recirculating warm air back into the uh, back into the turbo, which again is bad for the power, obviously. So with a BOV atmospheric blow-off valve, you're just going to be vent into the atmosphere and the air going into the turbo is going to be ambient temperature because it's going to be coming from the outside. So this is the main reason why, in theory, an atmospheric blow-off valve is superior to a recirculating blow-off valve. So if they're so great, atmospheric blow-off valves, why don't they use them on cars? Why don't they use them on the cars in the factory? Well, 99.9% .9 of cars want to be as uh, quiet as possible so with an atmospheric valve you're going to be getting a noise every time you change gear which is uh, basically unacceptable for most people because it's going to be making noise even if you don't want it to make a noise um, another reason very small reason why a blow off atmospheric blow off valves are not used in the factory is because the issue of the MAF sensor you can have to relocate the MAF to the um, pressure side of the system or at least this side of the intake um, so you the MAF the mass airflow sensor is metering the air properly if you just fit an atmospheric valve to a normal car with a MAF sensor like so the MAF sensor is going to be measuring air it's going to the ECU is going to be adding fuel to the engine so it can burn with the air but this air is just getting vented to the atmosphere between gear changes <laughs> So you're going to get excess fuel, excess fuel consumption, black smoke, possibly stalling issues, um, and uh, premature engine damage because the uh, petrol is cleaning the walls of the uh, engine. So it's uh, not not great at all. I suppose they could recirculate it in front of the mass sensor, but I, honestly, I don't know of a single car that does that. If you do, 
feel free to leave a comment in the video description. I'd like to know um, what cars do that. So that's it, guys. That's the video. Do Bob's uh, make more power? Yeah, on a race car, there's many benefits because you're not going to care about the noise. Whereas on a road car, you're never really going to be driving the car so hard that, well, it obviously depends on the car, but by and large, the heat soak that you can get from the intercooler and the turbo is not going to really be a serious issue. Um, and obviously it's going to be quiet all the time, so this is also a bonus. So it just comes down to practicality and you know practicality and you know for civilized uh, uses basically. Yes, an atmospheric potentially is better, but for 99% of the time, the uh, recircling valve is going to be quieter. Uh, you know, okay, you're going to lose some response potentially. You're going to lose some capacity potentially. Um, you're gonna lose. You're gonna be vent. You're gonna be recirculating warm air into the engine. But you know, for a road car, you're probably not gonna notice a difference because the engine's not driven hard enough for long enough to notice. So that's it, guys. Can a Bob make more power? Yes, in theory. Practically, on a day-to-day, -day, on a daily driver, you're probably not gonna want one, just because it makes the noise all of the time. Uh, as always, guys, please vote in the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again next time.